Alright guys, hey now, what's going on everybody? Alright, welcome to the show, fantastic, fantastic, welcome everybody, welcome. Now let's go through some of the colors we're going to be using today, our uh, purple dioxazine, maybe some of the Van Dyke brown, probably won't use either of the two greens, the sap green or the thalo green. We have a little bit of our Lamp Black, Prussian Blue, Meaden Crimson, Thalo Blue, Bob Ross Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White. 24 by 24 inch canvas, and it's covered in all places with just about the same amount of the liquid white across all of the canvas. That's what you want to have in order for it to be nice and slick and wet in order for us to paint. <clears throat> now, let's come in here. And let's go with this purple dioxazine by Gamblin 1980. It's a gorgeous color. Oh my, look at this. This is gonna be fabulous. A little bit of that purpley bit. We'll throw some blue in there. It's gonna be awesome. You guys are gonna tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwiches? Because we all love to know the sandwich question, of course. So we do have a spinner winner wheel as well. If you do buy the painting during the show, you get a chance at spinning the wheel for a free gift. And that free gift could be a hat, a poster, a backpack, a hoodie, a crappy candle. You got lots of free options to go with. Let's go with our little bit of our Thalo blue. Maybe we'll come in here. Ooh, look at that blue with that purpley. Oh, it's fabulous. Just excellent. And have this really cool looking sky. Be really neat. Now, take our blue in from the sides, maybe drag it from the edge over here. Maybe a little longer on the bottom, a little less up top, right? Just dragging it across. Now, let's go back over here. We'll grab up a little bit more. and drag it over here, but we'll go less on the bottom and more on the top. How about that? Just a little reverse action. A little reverse cowgirl over here. Oh, my. Hello. Oi, 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 <laughs> a little reverse action from this side. It's going to be fantastic. So, come in with our, th our uh, purple dioxazine right over the top of that bluish. Fantastic, you guys. I don't want to put too much of it on there, of course. If we have too much of it on there, when it be too much paint, it's going to be too hard to play with when we get up later on. So, don't allow there to be too much paint onto the canvas, just little bits. And the more that we add, the harder it's going to be to layer if we have too much paint. Oh, that's gonna be such a pretty, pretty color, you guys. Maybe a little bit of our mead and crimson as well. Just grab a, there we go. Just a little touch of this guy. And then, let's see. Oh yeah, just right in there. Little small, little baby touches of different colors. Gonna have an awesome little thing happen in here. Very cool. Now, we're gonna go back and blend it all out. So don't worry about what it looks like until we go back and blend out our sky, and then you can start to judge, all right, maybe I want to change it over here, maybe I want to do something over here or over there, and then we'll get to decide what it's going to look like after we blend it all out. So, tell me where you're watching from, guys. What is that favorite sandwich? Let's go wash this guy off. Now, we wash the brushes in odorless mineral spirits. Wash it, flick it into the trash can, come back to your beater bucket. And you beat the devil out of it, of course. Of course. Very cool. Now, let's see where we got people watching from. Where are you guys from today? Where are you from all over southern New York? Man, California. We got Arizona. Let's see. Gorgeous already. Yeah, we haven't even hit. We haven't even started. Ohio, Iceland, Tennessee, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Texas, San Diego, Canada, Texas. You guys can't type them faster than I can read them. Spain, Germany, Kansas, 
uh, Michigan, Canada, Northern New York, Canada, Tennessee, New Jersey, England, New Hampshire, Florida, Canada, Connecticut, Georgia, Washington, Nevada, baby, Nevada. I'm in Nevada, too. Nevada! Excellent. All right. All right. You guys are just fantastic. Thank you. The whole, the whole crowd in here is just awesome. Now, we've washed off our brush. We beat the devil out of it. Now, we're going to come back in, and let's just say into our lightest area first is where I like to start. So, that little light color in there. And then as we come with all of our pressure and our crisscross strokes back and forth, right, you start blending all those colors together. All these beautiful little things as they come. And then we don't want to take all that dark color and drag it back across this light area. I want to try to retain one little piece of light up in the sky up there. And it'll just help our clouds kind of bounce off in different ways. A lot of pressure down here, really pushing hard, blending, crisscrossing. Get this gorgeous little sky out here. Remember, all this paint is wet. The canvas is wet. The paint that's on the brush is wet. It's called the wet on wet technique. And it's been around for about 400 years. It's not just Bob Ross that created it. And what's funny, people forget Bill Alexander who taught Bob Ross how to do it. And they're like, oh, you're just a Bob Ross copycat. I'm like, what about Bill? What, ha what happened to poor Bill? Poor old Bill that everyone forgets about. There we go. Just like this, guys. Right? Leave that big old chunky white center in the bit. We're gonna be mixing this so many times back and forth, it's not gonna matter what this looks like, right? This is all we care about. And then we come up in there with a bunch of clouds, and different things and stuff. It's gonna be awesome. Just gonna be awesome. Yeah, Bill is a legend, right? It's gotta be, gotta be. So let's see you guys. Once you get your sky all blended out and crisscrossed and it's just as gorgeous as you wanna have it, we can go back and wash our brush and then we'll come through and we'll really lay down some pretty, pretty clouds. Right? Leave that big old open space though. We're gonna wanna have it there. You can cross it a few times, <clears throat> but don't try to drag too much paint across there. It's gonna be more difficult as we go for later. We've got brand new paint with Josh hats in. If you can't already tell, the black and yellow is back in stock, baby. <laughs> All the, uh, all the fans took my black and yellow hats when I went to Tennessee. They bought all those black and yellow ones that I've worn, all the new ones, and they took all my favorite hats. So I had to, had to order some more. And you know what? I think they messed up because this is orange. It's not yellow. So I think this is going to be a free hat and I'm going to get another one. It's going to be fantastic. Now let's save some of this light color by maybe popping in a cloud under it or over it, depending on what you want to do. So let's grab a little fan brush, just like this, and a lot of white paint. Guys, when we're on a, a, uh, a white canvas, we have to use so much more paint than when we're on a black canvas. We're using such a small, small, small amount of paint on a black canvas. And then when we come here, we gotta have all this extra white on the brush because it, will, it wants to blend away. It wants to go away, mix in with all these colors, right? So watch this, maybe we take our little bit, come down, maybe we we'll save a little section of that lighter color, pop up in here, smoosh it out to the side, just whatever you want to do. Gorgeous, right? There is no, there's no de designated shape for a cloud. There's no specific way to paint one, right? That's as pretty of a cloud as I've ever seen. Come out here, because you can't tell me you've never seen one that looks just like this out there in your backyard, on your way to work, you know, sitting out there driving around you've looked up in the sky and you've seen some soft puffy white clouds like this right very easy to paint just with our pressure we start pulling it out and we start mixing it and it starts blending with all these other colors that we laid down first right the blue the purple they're all wet so they're all going to start to mix and blend and mix and blend man that looks cool Woo! let's come up here a little bit more you know what we could do all this excess darkness down here is just screaming, screaming for another cloud, right? But we have to keep a bit of the dark in between the two pieces of white. Otherwise, it becomes one cloud, and that's not what you want to have, right? So maybe, just maybe, oof, oof. I don't want to put a mountain in here, so let's come back, come up, touch a little bit, drop down, save some of the darkness, pop back up, try to get up next to the light in, pop our new little section of cloud in there, a little bit of extra paint. Come in here, scoop up a bit more, drop down a bit, pop, 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 everywhere. 
anywhere and everywhere. Actually, a little bit more over here even. And stay disconnected from that other cloud, right? Dragging it back away from the other cloud. Come back here with our brush. Same brush, didn't wash it. It's got a big old... <laughs> Doesn't want to come off. There we go. It was buried in there. So, same brush. A little bit of paint on it from before. Come up here, just the corner, right? Just grabbing it, just barely. We're not touching the whole brush. And you wanna know why? You wanna know how I can show you? Right here, we can come, we can tickle the whole bum of the whole brush, look at that. All that is not contacting the canvas. So even though we have a whole big old two inch brush, it's not all touching all at the same time. And you start to mix it down and you save a little bit of darkness, right? You have that extra bit of paint right in here. So it's super bright against the super dark, back to the super bright. Layers, baby, layers. You gotta work in layers. Remember, guys, this one's available for sale. You can go to my Etsy store or you can go to paintwithjosh.com and find all of the paintings, the prints, the merch, the hats, the shirts, the everything over there on paintwithjosh.com. London redid it all for me. It was fantastic. Well, it is now. It used to be garbage. Now it's fantastic. She'll tell you how bad my site was before and how excellent it is now. So go over there and check it out. If you haven't checked it out recently, go check it out. And the Etsy store is uh, paintwithjosh.etsy.com and you'll be able to uh, find all of my things on Etsy that you'll ever need. Look at that gorgeous little painting, you guys. You guys, that is fantastic. My goodness. My goodness. Okay, let's scrape up a little bit of white because you guys know whenever I do a very cool sky that I just love, I gotta go back and add in London's mom as a contrail out there in the sky, and it just keeps us, keeps her in our memory. She was taken away from us too soon. And so we come out here, and every so often in a really pretty sky, we throw out a little contrail for Karen. Bang, just like that. Wicked cool. Mix it up right here where it touched the clouds so you don't realize where it popped out from. And all of a sudden, a you know, wicked cool little thing flying through the sky. Flying through the sky. Love it. Okay. Now, let's come in, mix up a few dark colors in order to create just an enormous, an enormous mountain, right? We're going to mix up three colors. Now, what are those three colors? You're going to have to check the comments below because there's probably about 100 people in there that are typing them in as we speak right now. These three colors that we like to mix up in order to create a deep, darkness and that deep darkness is going to contrast against all the light color of our sky all of our bright clouds right so what are those three colors and maybe just maybe we'll see here let's see donna owen 110 knows blue black and crimson yay woohoo <laughs> Right? Let's see, uh, I'll go like this. Yes! Black, blue, and crimson. That's what we're doing. All right? Now we're going to scoop up, flatten out, scrape this good old giant section of paint as we come up here. And we just start deciding where do you want this old, ugly mountain to live? You got to have a couple little jaggedy bits in there. You can't have it just be the straightest old thing you've ever seen. Right? Maybe up in here we get a little flat bit. Who knows? A little edge, like a little bit off the top, like a little ledge. Oh, yes, right there. All right, but the rest of it might fall down in different directions. You never know which way it's going to go until you go lay it out and start pulling on it and playing with it, right? Got to end up playing with it. That's the fun part. Boy, yo, 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 yo. Of course. Josh is such a child. Such a child. I love it, though. I love it. <laughs> there we go. Couple little crazy looking mountain bits out here, right? All we need to do. Now we can even take that same two inch brush that we just had, right? Still haven't cleaned it. Come up here and grab our mountain and just pull it out. Where are you gonna, how are you gonna shape your mountain, right? Just based off of our pressure, we can decide where our little ridges are gonna live. They're going off that way. Maybe you take this guy and you start coming down from the center. Over to here, maybe this guy's back in there making a little just a little crazy little shape let me take this guy pop him up a little bit more have it be a little more funky maybe a little more funkier in there right 
come down here like there's a little valley. Now all of a sudden we're starting to spread all this paint, right? But we can decide how far we want it to go. Maybe we take this guy and we start pulling off in this direction. Maybe we add a little bit more paint so it stays dark. We have a whole nother ridge right there, right? All depends on which way that we pull our brush. Maybe these guys were sliding down. Maybe this guy was like, started to come down the other direction. Right? Maybe we take the back of him and we start pulling it off this way. Doesn't matter, right? This is the 1,005th painting that I've done. It does not matter what you do back there. It's gonna be awesome, no matter what, right? Just based off our pressure, look, we can take this whole guy, slide him down in underneath, building our mountain as we go, right? Come back in with that darkness, back in here, off in the other direction, right? So you got one going this way, one going that way, and then all of a sudden, guys, we got some really cool looking mountains starting to build out of nothing. Right? This guy comes down like this. Just like that, very cool. Out of nothing, right? Literally did nothing. We did nothing. <laughs> didn't even mix anything, didn't do much, honestly. Now, let's come back and make up just a pretty little snowy scene. Let's get a little of our blue, just a little bit. We don't need a whole terrible amount. Let's get a little of that purple too. Might as well mix them both up. A little of our white, mix those guys up. Ooh, that's nice. Scrape him up over here, grab a little of our dark mix, drop that down into it just so it dulls it down, scrape down to the bottom of our pile, of course. Gotta have it be dull. It doesn't want to be the brightest bit out in the painting, right? Leaving it just like that, all messy. Come in here, scrape up a little bit, and let's decide off the back edge, we start dropping off this light blue color, right? And this light blue color is going to act as our snow. Right, it's very close to what the color of the canvas is, and you'll see when we come off the back with our white just how much it's going to light up in our face. Right, we don't want it to be too terribly different from the light color. So, as you come back and drop in little baby bits, little things, right, we're not trying to cover up every single piece of every bit of the blue or anything like that. I want to leave all those little broken areas, those little broken bits back there. Come back with about double the white that we grabbed first. Grab a little sneak of our blue down here, and then we'll mix it up right into this gorgeous little super bright white, like sky blue color. Just very bright. Very bright. Look at that. Oh, now this acts as our super bright white snow as we come in here, scrape this guy up, and maybe just off the front side. Start dropping down little bits, contacting the canvas in little areas, different little places that are going to go light up when it gets touched by that light. Oof. All right, drag them down. Maybe this guy comes off to the side. It's coming over the other direction. Right? All depends on where we drag our, our little knife. That's why I like doing the, the shadows first. Right? Every time I used to watch Bob, he would go do the highlights first, and then he would go back and sneak in little shadows, which is cool. That works if you're a if you're a professional, right? If you've done 30,000 paintings like Bob did, that works fine. But if you're a beginner, it's easier if you can kind of lay out your shadows and then go back in and cover over what you don't want to see with your highlights, right? And then you don't have to focus so much on every single piece being quote unquote perfect, right? You can go back, you can cover over little bits, you can do little things, just excellent. Check this out. I just saw this right here. Like a little reaching bit, right? Just light it up in a weird way. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now that's my favorite part of the whole painting, right? All because we lit it up in some strange little way. A little bit of light on the top of that guy. A little bit more back in there. Just anywhere you want to have it. Literally anywhere. Go back, mix it up. If you don't like it there, take it away. Come back with the smallest bit of our minute little teeny bit of our dark color. And you can come back into these little areas and just light them up with some deep, dark shadows, right? You get those deep, dark areas where the sun just has a rough time reaching all the way back here, right? We don't want to put on so much paint that it just blacks it out, of course. But we have a little bit of those differences, and that's going to end up looking really neat when we go back to do our little mist and stuff like that. Very cool. Very cool. Little things. Doesn't have to be the same everywhere, of course. Never want it to be the same everywhere. A bit more of that blue as we come down in here. Whoop! There's a bit of crimson in that guy. Look at that. Big old chunk of crimson. A little happy accident right there. 
That's fine. That is fine. We'll come back, grab a little bit of blue, a little bit of white. Let's mix up a little bit more snowy, mixy color. And that way we can bring down a bit more color on our thing. And it doesn't have to be the exact color, right? We always took a bit of our darkness as well, mix that down into it. it doesn't have to be an exact match. And it came down here, right? All this is gonna be lit up by uh, our misty fog, so it doesn't really matter what it is, or if it's the same color or anything. We just need a bit of excess brightness down here that we can smush, right? Now, we come back with our big old two inch brush. I'm gonna dab mine off on a paper towel. And that way there's not too much paint on the brush. Same brush, haven't washed it yet, but now there's not so much paint on it because we dabbed it all off on a paper towel, right? Now we'll come back in here, just very lightly. The opposite way that we came down, we're gonna go up with the bristles, right? If we came down with the knife, almost like this. All right, there we go. If we came down with our knife, we're gonna go up with the brush. Down with the knife, up with the brush. So if you turn your knife this way and you came down this way, guess what? You gotta go up that way with your brush, right? Came over here, down this way, we're gonna go up that way with the brush. So, all depends on your angles. You can't go against the angles, that's a big no-no. Don't fight against these angles. All right, when we had our little spot back here, we're going back there, little touch of the blue was in that way, we come back this way, sliding up our mountain face with such a light little touch that you wouldn't even wake up a sleeping baby. Just so light. Gotta have it so lightly. And that way, the baby stays asleep, we get to continue painting, and we don't have to go back and babysit, right? Because that's not what we want to do. We're not out here to babysit, we're out here to paint. All right, and get more of our white, a little sneak of our blue in there just to keep it a little duller than usual. We don't need it to be our pure white off in the distance. Come in, scrape up this guy, and maybe we accentuate a few more little bits of crazy parts of our mountain back here. Right? Maybe the light tried to sneak its way off the back, too. Who knows? Oh, yeah. See, it just makes it a little bit more round. Come back in here a little bit more. More uh, on a sideways, kind of a horizontal angle down here. And that way, it'll build some depth. And another little ridge going off that way. Take this guy. We can fling him off the side. Right? Just leave little differences in between everything. Come up here. We came off the back. So we'll go up this side. We came that way. And this way, I'm just softening down those little details. Looks very cool. Very cool. Actually, it looks like I need just a little touch of just some pure white. Just sprinkling down. Boop, just like that. A couple little bits. Nothing too much, right? With too much paint up there. You're not going to like the end results. I'm telling you now. Very cool. All right now, let's come back in. And let's make our mist. Like all that light blue I was telling you about. We come in, we start tapping it, and we work it outward, just with the corner of the brush, right? Working down in these angles like a typewriter. Each time we're going to a new section of our clock, right? New little minute hand, working all the way down. I'm doing it, I'm overextending just to show you guys, right? Just like a clock. If this was the center, we'd be going out, and then down, 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 then this way, right? So we work it in, work it in, work it in. Pop, 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 what's up, B? What are you doing? I'm excited. About? The mine. Oh, gotcha. And you tap it down and you work it in and you tap it and you work it and you tap it and you work it. Right? You mix all that stuff up and all it does, every time we hit the canvas, it spreads the bristles out. Spreads them, spreads them, spreads them, spreads them, spreads them. You just them. got a gift. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the gift. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! So you need Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> she, you look at me like I'm, like, like I'm the dumb one. Everyone loves me, okay? I know. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. Let's take this guy and we'll really mix up the bottom. And now we've created a very soft little section. Just the softest little section for our cloud to float onto, right? You don't want to take a cloud and go run it across all this thick white and blue paint. It's going to be harder to do. But if we mix up the bottom and we smush it and we mash up the things... Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you for the joke. Oh, what's that, what's that Kelsey girl say? Or what the hell's her name? Kelsey Ray? Thank you for being part of my team. Oh, thank you for being part. Oh, my God. I can't stand that woman. I literally cannot stand that woman, honestly. I don't know why. I'm sure she might be a fan. <laughs> it's nothing personal. I just don't like the NPC thing. I don't know. I just don't like it. I don't like the NPC nonsense that this world has become. 
Oh, and now it's like everyone's doing it. I might as well start doing it. Like honestly, I might as well start doing it. And just and just I'll just I'll just hate on everyone. I'll just I'll, I'll I'll parody everyone. Be like, oh, thanks for joining my team. Extra butter, bitch. Oh my god, I can't. I can't do it with that way. Oh, I just can't. And there's the Michael Jackson dude. There's like a Minnie Mouse dude that does it. There's this old lady clown that does it. It's all weird. It's just all weird. Everything's weird, guys. All right. Thank you for the gifts. I love all you guys. Even though I don't react to them and I can't see them sometimes because I'm up here in front of the camera and you guys are back there and I only get to see when I come back behind the camera. Uh, I do appreciate every gift. I love every single fan. Thank you guys for being here and watching, honestly. Honestly, honestly, honestly. And okay, I like that Kelsey Ray girl, okay? I like her, I like her. I find myself watch, I get stuck watching her. I don't know why. Like, I dislike it so much that I get stuck watching her going, Oh, thanks for the butter, bitch! Oh, I can't stand it. I can't. I can't do it. Okay, let's come in here. Now, let's mix up a little bit more of that deep, dark color. Who knows that deep, dark color? that we like to mix up. Let's get a little drum roll. Who knows that deep darkness? Brrr. Anybody? Anybody got those colors? Let's see. Let's see. What do you guys think of my little sound machine, by the way? Airy, fairy, fay knows. She's got it right. Blue, black, and crimson. That's right. Hey! <laughs> what do you guys think of my little sound machine, honestly? Mm. Love the sound machine. Perfect. Okay, let's mix up a little blue, black, and crimson. Okay, we'll go blue, blah, black, blah, and the crimson paint just in about all three of the same amounts. And then we really get down and dirty on it. Just down and backwards. Dirty. Woo! Dirty dancing with this stuff. <laughs> Just mush it up. All three colors should become one deep, dark mix. Almost looks exactly like the pile of black paint, right? It's really deep, dark purple is all it is. Now, let's come in. We'll grab an old fan brushy. Just an old fan brushy. Come in here like that. Into our paint. Wiggle it down. What's that song? Wiggle, 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 right? Wiggle this sucker down through all that paint, flattens it out, extends it down about two inches or so. Now we've got a whole bunch of it on the edge of the brush. We can come back in here and decide where we want to have a bit of stuffs. Maybe we want to come in like this and we come down and we come up into that foggy bit, not up into the thick snow, not all the way up here into that stuff, into the mist where we tapped out and we did all the mushing and we, sm we, we blended the paint around a bunch of times into the mistiness come up in here right the higher you go up into your snow the harder it's going to be to make these trees look and stay dark and act like far away trees so don't go too high up right especially woo, you want to stay away from those thick areas of paint i'm telling you from experience you do i'm not being i'm not joking like okay you i'll do it but you guys don't do it no 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 don't do it don't do it at all. Let's not go too far with these guys. Let them drag off like that. And I'll show you why. Because we'll come in with a whole nother section of trees, right? And you're like, those aren't trees. What is that garbage out there? Why am I watching this guy, right? All we need to do every time that we're doing a painting is work between dark and light and dark and light and dark and light. It's a play of light and dark. That's all art is. Art is a play of light and dark. I can't remember who said it. It's probably Bob Ross, because he's the only one I ever watched anyway. But uh, it's probably him, but he's right, right? You go from our, our kind of light to dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, light, back and forth all the way through until we're done, right? Now, let's get some more of that ASMR going. Get our frustrations out of the week. I don't know about you guys, but it's my Friday. Woo! <laughs> so no more working for me besides painting all weekend. But... We're gonna come in here, we're gonna to start to make our mist again. I, this is one of the questions I get all the time. Josh, how do you paint the fog? How do you do the misty bit? I show you in every single video, you're not paying attention. That's not my fault. If you're not paying attention, right? We're gonna come in here, we're gonna to start to smash it down. 
down, down, down. Same thing that we did up here, right? We were going out and around and down and around our whole mountain, okay? Now with our trees, we're just gonna go up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, across the whole thing. Tapping little bits with our corner of our brush, bringing it down, coming up next to it, like a little typewriter, next to it, next to it, next to it. Bring it down. Don't have this be all the same. Go up and down and up and down. We're just nearly right at the tip top of the trees. Now over here where I told you it was gonna fade away into nothing, look at this. The more that we mix it and, and bash it, you literally get those to blend away to literally nothing. It's fantastic, right? Now let's come down in here. Let's grab a little bit of this paint. Actually, we might need a little bit more onto the brush. Dab down a couple little bits out there and then we're just gonna pull them down. All right, streaking it down out there. Then these guys in our water, we're just gonna pull to the side. All we need is a little bit of color reflection down in the bottom. All right, now back in here, we take that mistiness wherever we had, very lightly, by the way. Don't wanna pull too much. Get that misty bit. Now you can't tell me where the, the trees kind of stop, how far they go down, because you have that little bit of mist kind of floating on our water back, uh, on our water back there like that. That's what I was gonna say. Now let's get a little of our white color onto the brush and let's come up into those trees. All right, lots of white, otherwise it will blend away very quickly. You gotta have a lot of white up there. All right, we can come back with that same brush. I haven't washed it one time. I just keep bashing it on a paper towel. Just go smack, smack, smack on a paper towel real hard, getting some of that color off. Now we're gonna go very, very, very light pressure because that white will disappear so fast. Watch this, right here. I'm gonna go hard pressure and the, the white is literally gone. It's like we never even put anything over there. All right, but right here where I want it to stay, I have to touch it so lightly so it doesn't disappear. All right, we don't want it to be big and thick and chunky. We just don't want it to be too thin, right? Gotta be able to see it. It's kind of catching all those trees floating amongst all that. We don't know if there's water back there. Where the water is? What the heck's going on? And that's my favorite kind of paintings. It makes you wonder what is happening back there. What's on the opposite side of that forest at the base of the mountain? You know what I mean? It makes you want to look over back and see what's back there. That's adding depth to your paintings, right? You got to cover up some of your favorite parts. Like I always say, right? like maybe we have a little guy. Let's come back in here like this. We'll come back in we'll start popping, staying down away from the thick snow. We don't need all that. And now let's pop up like we were connected on that same line. And now we're gonna bring this guy with a little bit darker paint, right? So more paint on the brush, bring him down underneath his buddies into that little bit of foggy mistiness, right? Back there, adds more depth. You don't wanna go so far down. We're saving some of the fog. And that's gonna push those other trees backwards and stick these guys out here in the front just with the smallest little bits of stuff. All right, like, oh, you know what? Let's pop up a little bit higher. Let's come over here. In between all those little bits of fog, right? Now we can even take these guys and make these guys our reflective trees in the front. I'm taking some of them, come down like that. Over here, little spiker. It's a little taller, a little taller. I wanna save a little bit of that original white color so don't do too much. Okay, but now back here, let's come in. Let's go up to the top first, a little bit of pressure. And you can see the disconnect in between there, just that little bit of fog pushes that other forest further off in the distance, keeps this guy in the front. You don't wanna have them come up and touch too crazily, right? If they're all the same color and they're all touching, then what happens? Nothing is separated. You don't have any depth. You have nothing. You have nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna come in here like this couple little streaks down, sort of deciding where we want our, our land to sit. All right, have our little bit of land out there. A couple little swipes to the side. Both ways though. If you pull it like this too many times, it'll make them all wiggly in one direction. It's weird, but it'll, it looks cool. Depends on what you want to do, right? Just like that. Very cool. A little bit of misty fog back there. Got our little reflections. Everything's looking neat. Now we got to come back and mist up this whole guy. All right, so what are we gonna do? Let's go back and add in a little bit more of our white. Add another little cloud to this guy. Smooshing it all up into those trees. Doesn't matter. Honestly, the white's gonna blend away so fast. All right, there's not a whole lot of it up there. We're gonna knock the paint off of the brush again, not cleaning it. Haven't gone into the bucket once yet with this brush. 
Very light pressure, otherwise it goes away. Very light, right? We're deciding about down to the last five inches of our foreground of our painting what it's gonna look like, right? As we come down in here, very light pressure, otherwise it disappears. So gently, so gently, look at that. All right, come back up, swipe up the fog into the trees just to blend any little bits. Boom, now you get that little bit of mistiness down here too, guys. Right now, let's say, maybe, you know what, that looks freaking awesome, actually. That looks awesome. Come back in here, I'm gonna mix it up. You know what, we're not even gonna have water. I don't want water. Maybe a little bit of water in the front, but not too much, not too much. There we go. Mix that guy down and down and down. This is why we don't cover the bottom with too much paint, because you're gonna be constantly mixing back and forth between all these little bits and different things and stuffs, right? Lots of stuffs. Let's see, you guys gotta tell me where you're watching from and what is that favorite sandwich while we sit out here and uh, out here just freeze our butts off in this cold. Mm. Oh, remember, the person that buys the painting gets to name the painting. And not only that, they get a chance at the free spinner winner wheel that's over there behind the painting that we pull out when we get done. So, oh guys, yeah, let's start adding in some foreground. I can, I can see the water, it's here, it's here. Okay, we're gonna come back into that dark pile since we still have some. Mix it up, a little bit thicker on our brush this time though. More pulls in the same direction, right? Spreading those bristles apart, getting it nice and chunky and thick on there. It's all full, thank you. Thank you for the rose. Thank you for the rose. I love roses. <laughs> ah, I just saw, I looked back and saw a rose. Thank you for the, thank you for the, thank you for the rose. I hate those people so much. Ah, man. All right, let's come over here and let's make a little bit taller than our background trees, right? And then a little bit lower. And if we can stick this guy and have him be right up here in the front, keep him nice and dark. Nice and full, nice and chunky with our paintbrush, right? Smacking it against the canvas, pulling it away, leaving our real thick, chunky, nasty mess of a tree back there. Just like that, a little bit taller, just so we can get a little smaller. Wish he was a baller. Wish he was a little bit taller. Look at this guy, fantastic. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Just got a little bit fatter too. Come back in a little bit more of that dark paint. Gotta have it. And we'll take a little dude, and we got a little saggy old tree back in here. A little smaller, right on the edge of the bristles of the branch, right? Trunk of the tree right against the edge, and that way you can overlap them. And we're gonna come down, let's go down in our little Z shape, and then we'll go back and we'll fill it all in. Okay, so you got your Z shape, uh, your little Z shape. Go back, you fill in the center bit. Now you got a funky little downward facing tree. Just like that, based off of the downward facing nature of the bristles of the brush. Okay, let's do one more little guy. Little guy, right over here. Maybe he's a little leaner, just like that. I'm gonna smack up against the canvas, pushing the bristles more and more and more and more and more and more and more, and more the more you go down, right? Now, we'll take a little one inch brush this time. Switch to the paint with Bram one inch brush, right? And we'll go over here, we'll just slide this guy out, just a little touch. All right, start pulling his little friends down this way. Maybe we grab a little bit more paint on the brush and we start to figure out what our land's gonna look like if we covered up all that water. Little different areas and different things. All right now, if I'm gonna have water here, I wanna do a little, just a little reflection of my tree, all right? But nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. We don't wanna have too much paint on the canvas, remember. All right, so we're gonna take them, we're gonna pull them slightly down, kind of letting all the color fill in those areas. And then you just very lightly swipe them across, just so you have that little bit of difference in there is all we need. Right against the lightest part of our side, our, uh, our water too is gonna be really cool. Gonna be really cool. Now we'll go back and we'll figure it in and we'll fill in different things and do different stuffs. Gonna be a good time. While we still have this paint on the brush though, let's come in and see if we can get a little Sticky tree to fit in right here. Boom, more pressure as we go down. will help your tree come down and sit with a fatter trunk. Just like this. Bloop. 
It's going to sit down right there. Depends on how far you pull it down. Depends on how far your tree comes, right? The further it goes up, the further back the tree goes in the distance. Like this. If you wanted him to be back here with these guys, we'll pull him down. Just take off about an inch, and now he's on the same level as those trees are back there. Very simply and easily done. Now, let's come in and get a bit of our... Should we do some snow? We got our snow on this side, so our shadow's on that side, and then we'll do snow on this side. So let's come in and get a little bit of our blue, just a little bit, a little bit of our white paint as well, and mix it up in our bluish whitish pile down here. Now let's go see what it looks like, and then we'll see what we can do with it. All right, we'll come back in here, a little bit of that bluish color, just to change it from the dark, right? Remember, we're going to have white bouncing off of it like we did back here, so it doesn't need to be super prominent in the blue. Just gotta be there a little bit. We're gonna make this little ridge, just like that, right? Little ridge. Then we'll have our thing happening off the side with our white paint. All right, so you could literally dab off the brush, not even washing it yet, come back in, scrape up a good amount of white. A good amount. It's gonna wanna disappear so fast off the edge of our little ridge. All right, then we'll drag it up towards our trees like that. A little bit of white. Going down the other side, right? So we'll take our blue, start to match the angle a little bit. Bam, bam, bam. Just like that, guys. Little bits, little things, little teeny tiny little bits of white. Might streak down and drag down just to kind of light it up a touch. Maybe this guy over here was light enough that he got some light off the edge of his hill, right? And I have some lights creep over the side right there, just like that. <laughs> Holy moly, that's cool. Come back in a little bit of darkness, a little bit. And then we get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And we go back and we get more paint. And we get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Right? And then we can decide, what are we going to let show? Very light pressure as we come back in here. Very light, very light, very light, Josh. So light. <whistles> oh, shoot. That is Wicked. Very soft little thing. See how it raises it up out the water like that? So pretty! Let's come back in. <laughs> we got one more bushy bit. Let's get a little... Dang, that's a hard brush. There we go. Get a little bit of black, a little bit of blue onto our brush. Just those two, black and blue. Come over here, pop in a little bushy bit. Right off the side and a little bit. Underneath, just a little bit of color though. Not near as much paint down below as above. Very lightly, swipe, swipe, right? Retain the shape without doing much to it. Very neat. We need to get a little bit more paint onto here, though. There we go. Little baby bits. All right, now, let's come back. Let's grab Paint with Bram's 19-foot or 17-meter-long liner brush. All right, we'll grab that nice, the gigantically long insane liner brush from the Paint with Bram set that I absolutely love, by the way. I, uh, I do talk a bunch of crap, but I love this brush. Like, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome brush. And it makes the most wicked little details. If it's nice and fresh and clean and filled with a lot of the odorless mineral spirits, right? You gotta have a lot of it. And the brush has to be nice and, and uh, clean and ready to go. All right, this one was a little bit stiff from the last time we used it. So I had to go wash it a little bit more thoroughly, get it in a little bit more of our odorless mineral spirits, a little bit wetter, and watch this. Get these whole crazy branches that come out of this freaking brush, and they just grow forever. Just forever and ever. It's like it will not run out of color until you get done. All right, I ran out of color. Let's come back and get some more color. Just like that. All right, come in here. Very light little things. It has like, even though it's the longest brush I've ever seen, it creates the sharpest little branches I've ever seen as well. So if you want sharp, sharp little branches, you gotta go get that Paint with Bram liner brush, man. And he's got a few more sets, I hear. Uh, as far as I saw on his Facebook page, I know he has a couple sets left. Or there was a few that uh, that he was going to use and then ended up not using, so there's more available than there was before. So if you want a set, get over there and check them out. Very cool. Very cool brush, I'm telling you. 
and I'm not saying that just because he's my buddy either. Like, it's an awesome brush. If it wasn't a cool brush, I just wouldn't use it, right? Like, I'm not going to come up here and tell you it's bad. I just, just wouldn't use it anymore. I'd be like, oh, well, that didn't really work for, you know, I'm not going to use that one. <laughs> but I continue to pull it out. I continue to use it. That means it's an awesome brush. Now, let's come back and we'll decide what's going to happen over here, right? Get a little bit of our snowiness. Start to build it forward. And we'll come back and get a little bit more of our dark mix as well. So, we got to ask that same old question. What are the three dark colors that Josh likes to use the most in order to create a deep, dark, shadowy mix? And if you don't know, check the comments. Somebody will know in the comments. It will be there. Those three deep, dark colors are just absolutely vital to the mixaging and the mixology of Paint With Josh paintings, right? Gotta have that dark mix. So what's that mix, guys? Let's get a drum roll here. A little drum roll, please. <laughs> Jeff 69 AU from Australia knows blue, black, and crimson, that's it. All right, we mix up that black, that crimson, and that blue, and we just go to town on this dark mix. All right, we don't want to use too many of those Meaden paints because they're going to make it very thin in a spot where we don't want the thin paint yet, right? So if you're running out of our Bob Ross Crimson, go back and get more of that out of the box. Don't jump over to your Meaden Crimson because it's very wet. It's not going to be the same consistency. It's going to make it harder to do things. Now, let's go back. We'll grab a monster fan brush and just try to load it up. This is the Bob Ross, like size six, I think. Yeah, number six. And in every other brand, it's like a size 14. So every time I get the, the comment, it's like, oh, what size brush is that? It doesn't matter. Just get a fan brush. Whatever size fan brush you have is going to be the one that's working, right? Just like that. Both sides of the brush. Bam, bam. Come up here. And we got to make them taller than these trees back here. Maybe even taller than our mountains over here. And we're just going to drop down a big old trunk. And that's going to be where our little tree lives, right? We'll come up here, and again, we're going to start smacking up into the canvas, creating all those little branches. You see what I mean? Get all these little things happening. You just smack outward. I'm going to do the one side, and then I'll show you guys how to do the other side. We come down here, and we smack and smack and smack, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger, all starting from the center trunk, working out. And then we'll go back to this side. we got to mix up some more paint, actually. These suckers in the front, they take a lot of paint. You have to have a huge amount in order for them to be as thick as you need them to be. Right? It's not about uh, like, oh, I just do it because I like texture in the paintings. No, 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 no. We're doing it because it requires it for our next layer to stick easier. All right? So say we came in here, we're just touching at the trunk. We're just kind of working our way out with our branches and our brush angled specifically upward like that. So they're making little branches, right? And the more that we go down, the more that you end up popping out, pushing down, and contacting the brush to the canvas, okay? Not every tree has to look exactly the same. They don't all have to have the same amount of thick branches here or there or wherever. It doesn't matter. Whatever yours looks like, it's going to be awesome, right? It doesn't have to be symmetrical even. There's all kind of crazy, funky trees out there in the night. All kind of stuff. All right, maybe we had another little guy. He's a little baby. He's a little baby guy over here. Maybe he's a little leaner. And again, right into the branches. You want them to overlap. You don't want them to be out there it's too far away. That doesn't look cool. That's not cool, guys. Come in here, little taps again. The more we go down, the more we smush pushing on the branch, right? Smacking against the canvas using just a corner and then we slap out. Make that branch of our tree. Corner slap, corner slap. Pull it away, pull it away. You gotta have all those thunky, uh, <laughs> thunky chick bits instead of chunky thick bits. Those thunky chick bits out here. <laughs> just like that. And in any place where, it's, where you can kind of see some background color, or it's not as dark as it is everywhere else, fill that sucker in with more little chunky bits of paint. That's what you gotta have. Now, let's come back and let's do something to this old bush back here, just real quick. A little of our liquid white right out there. A little of the blue, pop, pop, pop. Little things, right? Covering a little piece of the darkness. 
Don't want to cover up all that darkness, just a little bit. Look down very lightly, not trying to cover over our dark line that we installed back there. That'll make us mad if we have to lose that little bit. This guy right here, maybe we might pick up and drag through a little further. All right, not all the time is it going to be all shadow and shadows and dust, Maximus. There we go, a little bit of our white snow. Drag it down from this guy. Little bits off of that guy, cut in front over here, and all of a sudden, we're going to have this little cove that I just absolutely love to paint. I don't know why I do it so often. I love this little covey look. It's just a fun little, fun little painting to do. And we all like it when it's fun, right? It's more fun when it's easy. You can do it a little bit better. And then you can have a chance to kind of go crazy and do your own type of thing as well, right? It never all has to be exactly the same as mine. I always encourage you to change it up. And if you see something in your painting that's different, pop that sucker in, man. Throw them in there, see what happens. I'm just here to show you how to do a couple things and how to make stuff look neat, all right? Pull it out over here, maybe down a little bit, maybe up a little bit, pull off to the back over there, and our own little thing happening right out there. A little bit more of the white onto the brush, out onto this side. There we go, back up into the guy. Whew. Gotta keep it very bright though, all right? If it's not very bright, and it's gonna look like shadows. That's not what you want. Very bright white. Ooh, it's fantastic. You wanna have it blue over here, white on the one side, right? And it helps if you go back and wash your brush and add more paint and do all that stuff. That all helps, sure. But the more paint that you have on here, the harder it's gonna be to keep it all bright. So start with less. Don't have to have everything all in the beginning. You don't have to have it all as chunky as possible. All right, now we'll come back again, a little bit of that liquid white onto our brush. Let's come back onto this guy. I like the Paint with Bram one inch brush because it makes a, it makes a cool little bush shape as well as grass. It's like multi-faceted. You could do all sorts of stuff with this brush and not have to change brushes to like the round brush to create all that. You know what I mean? It's a very nice, very cool brush. If I had my own brushes, I would want them to be like these. They're very nice. Right. Not necessarily about what they look like, it's about how they operate. Right? The smooth operators. Alright, now if we come in here and we go, I think that might not be tall enough. So let's get a little bit more paint. Let's get a little bit more of that dark mix, our blue, black, and crimson. I just ran out of black too. I gotta go back to the box and get some more. Alright, nice, thick, dark. That's what we gotta have. Thick and dark, and then we're gonna come back and highlight everything. All right, let's scoop up into this monster pile of paint in here, and then let's add a couple little bushes at the base of our trees, right down here, all right? We don't wanna have them come all the way down to the canvas, uh, the bottom of the canvas. Don't need it to go all the way down there. So we're gonna decide, based off of where we pull out on the bottom, where our little trees and bushes live down here. Right. Maybe they want to come cover over just a little bit of that lightest spot back there, right? You have to cover over some of your favorite parts. I say it often. Now, off of these guys, maybe we pull back in this direction, right? And we come to a little point right here on this kind of downward angle like that, where we're going off to this side, and then over here, maybe we pick them up a little bit higher and work our way down to that angle over here where they meet. And then all of a sudden, look, you can drag some of your white snow from the other side even. Drag it up onto our little thing. A little fishing spot out here, if you ask me, guys. I'd be out there. I'd be out there. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. You know what? Let's do one more guy right in here. Right over here, little guy. Moving right on the edge, hides all that transitional water where it goes and turns, right? You don't need to show everything all the time. Take this guy, pull him out on this side, over that side. All depends on how we pull out the brush, the little streaks, they all matter. All right, streak this guy back this way. Very cool, guys. If we can walk around the edge, go post up a little chair right there and cast out. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. All right, let's get some of these brushes cleaned off. You guys are going to check in. You're going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? As I go to set this cup down and be like... Ooh. 
Whoa. <laughs> it's a big crashy noise. We got Australia, DC. Mm. Ooh, a patty melt from Ohio. Toronto, Kentucky, Baltimore! <laughs> Texas, Tennessee. Guys, speaking of Tennessee, I'll be in uh, Knoxville March 9th through the 17th in Knoxville for 10 days teaching classes. 10 straight days of teaching. So, I'm going to do two classes a day, one morning class, one evening class. Go to happytreesstudio.com to book your classes and the tickets. It's a few months away, but the quicker you get them, the closer seat you're going to get. You can secure those front seats versus having to sit all the way in the back. So, let's get some brushes washed off. You guys continue to check in. Tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwiches? Because why not? All right, wash this guy off over here. Remember, guys, this painting is available for sale. You can find it at paintwithjosh.etsy.com. That's E-T-S-Y, E-T-S-Y dot com. And if you purchase this painting, not only will you help me pay my bills and uh, survive, because this is what I do for a living, uh, but you also get to name the painting, whatever name you have in your head, or you can choose from any one of the comments down here. Uh, you get your choice of naming it, and then we'll write it on the back. And uh, it's fantastic. And you get a freebie. You get to spin the free wheel. I almost forget about the free wheel every time. Every time with the free wheel. No, not free will, free wheel, wheel, the wheel. All right. The free wheel. All right, let's get out the Gak Doctor fan brushes, because I'm going to come at these trees with some Gak Doctorness. Actually, you know what? There is one of these trees back here that I love the paint with Bram brush for. If you load the brush correctly, right? All about loading it correctly. Let's get it on the corner of the brush. Out there, a little bit of our bluey, a little bit. All right, so it's more on the, you got more up here, less as it goes outward, and then we can come in and just tap in little bits of blue tree, trend, uh, tree branches. Not too many. Got to leave those bits uh, dark back there. Right, and then off of that guy, and then we'll switch brushes, because this makes an awesome downward brush, and it makes an awesome upward-facing tree, too, but I want to use some other brushes today. There we go. Come off of this guy, and then we're going to tap outwards, making little things. We don't have to hide every, we don't have to show every branch, don't have to have every single thing be covered. All right, since we got this stuff on the brush, right, let's come over here. Snack. These guys are can be a little bit darker as well, right? Even the highlights are a little darker than our ones are going to be in the front. And that way these guys will stand out as much closer. So we'll come back in with a little bit more dark blue. Back in there. Little taps. Little things, right? Just little, little details back there is all you need. You don't need anything crazy on these guys. These are not the foreground trees. They're not the focal points. They're just little babes off in the distance. The little babes. Right out there. A little bit more over here. Little touch. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Little baby tree. Out like that. Perfect. Gorgeous. Take these guys, mix them in just a little as bit. Right there. Just like a little Z-shape, guys. That's all you gotta have. All you got to do out there is that little Z-shape. Especially on those downward facing trees there. They're fun and easy like that. Now, let's go back in and we'll get a GAC doctor out, just because I love these GAC doctors. They seem to, they seem to spread apart the best and uh, stay nice, at least for me they do. At least for me. Right, I'm gonna clean off a fresh little area on my palette so I can stay white over here. Let's come and grab up a bit more of our liquid white bit more onto the brush, come back up into that blue up here. And this is when we're just going to dab it until the brush is all about the same color blue. We kind of get rid of those little bits of white. It's a very wet consistency. All right, so say we come over here and we start coming in and slapping at this tree, dumping off little bits, right? We don't want to cover up the whole bit of darkness. We're not trying to cover every dark piece of the tree. 
You don't want it to be all blue shadowy highlight branches, right? Just little pieces. Look at all the dark bits in between all those little things that we left, right? We weren't out there just covering everything. We're out there leaving lots of stuff nice and dark because you don't have to see every single branch. Branch, my man, right there. A little bit down the side of him, right? Now we'll come back, wash this off, go back with our white. We'll get our liquid white and our titanium white because you have to have both. You can't just do one or the other. You gotta have a mix of both. Now, how much of the mix? That's, it's not something that can be told or taught. It's something that has to be learned. So you've got to get out there and start trying it and dabbing it in and going, okay, let's see if that comes. Whoa, that came off too much. Okay, let's get a little bit more thick paint so it doesn't come off so much. And then, oh, that didn't come off at all. Let's get a little bit more thin paint. And you work it in and then you kind of find out what the, uh, what the best way and the best mix of it is. We're gonna come back in here again, tapping up little time, little things as we go, little smacky smackies. And then covering up little bits of the dark, not trying to show every single piece of the light branch, right? Little taps, and we're going side to side, back and forth. Like little, like, like just like a typewriter. Tap, 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 side to side, all over the place, right? Now let's wipe that guy off, come back in, load it back up with the white paint so we don't have any, uh, anything diluting it from our guy over here, right? We'll come over here, tap onto him. Start dropping off little bits, turning the brush. The brush is almost, like literally almost touching the canvas right here. As we come in and slap a little bit. So you don't want it to be thick and very, pr uh, very bright at the bottom, right? So the more times you smack at the bottom, the more times it's gonna look unrealistic, right? Go back in, make it a little darker. Can't have your whole side of your tree be all the same. Okay, now we're gonna switch to that round brush our Bob Ross round brush, and then you guys are gonna start coming up with a name for this painting because she's just about finished, just about. All right, maybe another 10 minutes, maybe? Now, let's come in a little bit more of our liquid white. All right, come back up into that blue pile. You gotta have some of the blue, some of the liquid white, get it onto the brush, and then off the back side of our bushes, very light tapping. We're not trying to smush on everything. Right, very light little tap. So decide what's the back half of your bush. Say there's three bushes over here, maybe. Right, a little tap on that guy, maybe off the back side of here, a little bit of blue, right? And that way we can come in and tap in more bits of white in between those bits of blue, and it'll give us that depth and our distance like that, right? Very cool, so let's go wash this brush off. It's not about just putting the dark color and then just having our light color out there. No, 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 we gotta have the deep darkness, then the light blue, then the super light, you know what I mean? So your original deep dark shadows, then your, your shadow highlight, then your highlights. You gotta have a mix. It's all about the power of threes. The power of three. Now, let's come back over here, grab a little bit more of that liquid white mixture, all right? Come back into our titanium white mixture, dabbing it into the thick part of the pile, and then so lightly out here, not trying to cover over every piece of darkness, not trying to cover over every piece of shadow either. All right, come over here, scooping up a little bit more, popping up a little bit more. Little things, not trying to cover every single piece. Come over here, a little bit of light. Right, with that little bit of blue in between. And then maybe this guy just caught a little touch. Oh, who knows, over there, just a little bit, right? All those little differences in color. Light blue, light blue, light blue dark amongst everything, right? Can't just have it all. What's this, Subway, did I have it your way? Or what, who, who's, <laughs> whose slogan is that? Have it your way? Is that, uh, shoot, is that? It's gotta be, it's gotta be Wendy's. Have it your way? No, Burger King. Who's, whose slogan is that? Have it your way. Is it my favorite and I'm just messing it all up? Is it my favorite place and I just, is it? No, is it Burger King? All right, so I thought it was McDonald's. So, have it my way. I'm loving it at Burger King, baby. <laughs> Burger King is awful, by the way. I don't know, if, unfollow me if you have to. Hey, it's, uh, it's not good. I don't, I don't like Burger King, that's just me. That's just me, that's, you know. 
McDonald's is, I'm loving every time I go to McDonald's. You're right. You are right, because I do love every time I go to McDonald's. Now, let's come back in, a little bit more of our white onto our brush. Not the, the liquid white, just the titanium white. All right, we're kind of trying to pick it up in here and fling it up into our bushes. Not trying to go too far though, because remember, we do have to have a shadowy side as well. A little bit more of our white, maybe we grab it underneath here. Dragging it very lightly though, otherwise it's gonna mix in and disappear. Right, just like that, we drag it down at these different angles. Look at these little streaky bits. They're like little wavy things in the snow, guys. Awesome, just awesome. Then we take this guy and we wrap it around, drag him down like that. And now he wraps around the side of the canvas over here. Very cool, maybe this guy caught a little bit more light just back here, just a touch. Not too much, just a little bit. A little bit of light back there. Who knows? Who knows? Boom. Real bright white, though, on the side that is white. You know what I mean? Our, our bright side of our snowy bit. Very lightly up into the bushes like that just helps make it look more real to me. That's all. No one else but me has to say that. A little bit of our bluish color, just to help our shadow a little touch. Just a bit, guys. Oh, who Nelly. Man, I like this one. A little bit of shadowing over here. Come back with a streak of white. Awesome. Excellent. 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 Sweet. All right, let's put a little bit of highlight on this guy back here. Just a touch, all of our lights coming from the right. So let's grab up a little touch of that. We're gonna come in and just tap and deposit it just on the one side, on the right side of the tree branch, not on the left side. All right, so up here, each side is getting harder and harder to determine. So you don't have to go all the way to the tip top. You don't have to get all the way up there. All right, a little bit of light, a little bit of light. Tap, 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 tap. Almost all the way over leaving a dark edge as well. You can't cover up everything. Don't cover him all the way up. He doesn't like it. You got to allow some of that deep, dark color that we had initially, right? That makes it stand out. Now, here's the question. Do we put one more tree in? Sticky guy like that? Or do we put him over here? A little, shh, little sticky guy in here on the left, I think. Got to be. Got to be in here on the left. Excelente, I love you. I love you too, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm thinking tree on the left. You like how I backlit it with purple lights too, down here? So we got the purple light with the purple sky. <laughs> All right, are we going to put a big tree in? Let's see. Frank, love you too, Frankie. Claire says left. Danielle said left. Let's see. Celestial skies. That's really cool. Left for sure, says everybody. So how much was my easel? It was actually 149. And uh, if you go to the link in my bio, it will take you to my website where then I have a list. Uh, it's called the Paint Like Josh section. And that has the supplies list, which has the link for the easel in it. Just like that. This is one of the best easels I've ever had, by the way. It's... Uh, it's sort of professional, you know what I mean? Like it's it's kind of big, but it does fold flat. You could put it under your bed uh, if you have if you were short on space or whatever. And um, it's just it's it's awesome. It holds every size canvas that I've ever wanted to paint on it. Um, you know, in full disclosure, I screw mine to the ceiling so it doesn't shake around so much. Just so my videos stay nice and clear and the canvas isn't wobbly. We don't have to hold it. You know, every canvas is going to be a little wobbly. And so I take mine and screw it to the ceiling so it can't move. I don't care what my landlord says. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, no, it is, it is screwed to the ceiling. Absolutely, 100%. Zip! Right to the top. And that way, it can't wiggle because I don't like it when the camera starts to wiggle. Thank God I'm a painting boy. Yeah! All right, let's come in here. A little bit of that maiden black and a little bit of our Bob Ross black. Just a touch. That mead and black helps thin it down to where it becomes wetter. And when it's wetter, it will come off of the brush easier, stick to the canvas easier. 
So as we come over here and we go like this, very lightly, very light, and then as we come down, we push harder and harder and harder and harder into the canvas, making the trunk bigger and thicker at the bottom. All right, we all get a little older and a little thicker at the bottom, I think. Boom, just like that. Now, up into here, you can always extend him, you can bring him up, you can do whatever you gotta do, all right? In order to have yours look perfect. As soon as you have it perfect, then it's time to stop. Little bit, little bit, little bit. Now, doesn't have to be the straightest tree ever. There we go, perfect. Perfect. Come over here, let's go back and grab that 19 foot long Paint with Bram liner brush. I think it's about as long as an aircraft carrier, something like that. Just about as long as an aircraft carrier, the Paint with Bram 179 meter long liner brush. It's excellent. I hope you have freight delivery in your neighborhood because it takes a semi truck to deliver this brush. It's so, <laughs> I love it though. All right, let's come back in here. Uh, look at these branches, you guys. Literally not a better liner brush in existence, if you ask me. Like I do, I like to talk shit, you know what I mean? I like to make you guys laugh. But in all honesty, if you don't have this brush already, what are you doing? I've told you already how awesome it is. Get over there and get the freaking brush. How many times do you want me to say it? Let me look. I don't even have to go back and add any more paint. We can still rock more branches and more branches and more branches and different branches. Like, it's insane, this brush. Go get the paint with Bram set if you don't have it already. Let's wrap this guy around the side, too. Watch this. Oh, baby, I want to get with ya and take your picture, just like that, off the side, and we'll come out here, a little bit going off the edge over there, a couple little sneakers off the edge over here, a little bit off of that side, maybe one over there, one up going this way, because who knows, it's the paint with Bram liner brush that's as long as an aircraft carrier, straight through the tree. Just like that. You gotta have enough paint on the brush though. So you carve out a channel and then you can go back and fill it in. Right over here. Zip zap zoop. Let's see. I don't know what that is. Over here. Remember, if you want to get this painting, it's available. But it's first come, first serve. So if you want to get it, you better get it before someone else gets it. And if you don't like it that much, we're gonna go take it and put it to a uh, what? 666,000 Facebook followers now, guys. 666,000. The mark of the beast at my Facebook page. So get over there and follow me if you don't already, and that way I don't have the the mark of the beast number for the for the Facebook followers, guys. Come on. Come on. Come over there. Out to the side, over to the edge. Just wicked. Just wicked. Okay. Let's wash off this old insanely gigantically long liner brush I mean it's almost I mean in all honesty it's almost like it's almost like he was compensating for something <laughs> I'm just messing I'm just messing around just playing I freaking love it though it's absolutely one of my favorite brushes of all time very cool very cool brush. So even though all the smack that we talk, I still love it to death. It's awesome. Awesome, awesome. Now we're going to come over here and again. We're just going to touch and tap all the way up. Tap, 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 tap. It's going to start to kind of dull itself down, which is exactly what you want. You don't need it to be snow bright white up here, right? A couple little taps on the right side of the darkness. Leaving not all the way out to the edge, right? You have to leave a line of dark around the light all the way as high as you can get it to go doesn't have to be the same amount of brightness all the way to the top right and you have a couple little disconnected areas come in here tap down next to it just like a typewriter tap 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 little places guys little things little bits doesn't have to be the brightest thing you ever saw couple little places here and there little taps on our branches even Little bits, little baby things. Woo! Look at that sucker. Holy cow. Holy cow. Ooh, ooh, now 
Lovely. Out here, little touch, little baby bits. Little baby bits. Very, very nice, guys. Little things. Don't have to highlight every branch the same. Very cool. Now, let's go wash off this brush. Shake it off. Clean off the old palette. And then we'll be ready to name this painting. So, head over to the Etsy store. I've got lots of people over there. Got lots of people over there. Let's see. All right, all right, all right. Let's see, I just got a message from someone that said, you should offer gift wrapping on your Etsy store. I was like, no. <laughs> it comes in a box. You wrap the box. And then they'll, they'll be able to open it. Right? I'm, just, I'm not wrapping your presents. No stinking way. I don't care how much you pay extra. I'm not wrapping gifts. I barely wrap gifts for my own family. I'm not wrapping gifts for you. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. All right, come over here. Scrape up all the old palette. You guys start coming up with a name for this painting. What are we going to name it? It needs a name, guys. What are we going to name this old guy? It's actually brand new, but what are we going to name this old guy? We got more people in the Etsy store. They're over there. They're favorite and stuff. You better get over there and check it out before it's gone forever. And once it's gone, it can never be recreated exactly the same again. All right? Sure, we can do prints and stuff like that, but it can never come out exactly the same as this. They are literally a once-in-a-lifetime thing, just like every sunset that you see. You'll never see the same sunset again, just like every snowflake, every fingerprint, every Paint With Josh painting is unique and therefore can never be recreated. So, if you love it, if you just love it so much, get over to my Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Secure this painting for yourself. As a Christmas gift, maybe? Give it to somebody? I don't know. You got somebody that just moved house? Somebody just divorced, maybe? Needs something pretty to look at? Who knows? You don't know what they're looking at, right? You don't know what they like. So get them a Paint With Josh painting. And they're all 50% off this weekend only. 50% off. Just saying, guys. And you get a freebie. You get to spin the wheel, the free wheel of freebies. Look at this, just real quick. The wheel of freebies over there in the corner, right? I just broke the fourth wall and showed you guys like the behind the scenes stuff. That's not cool. Man, that's a cool looking painting, if you ask me. If you ask myself, I would say that that's a pretty cool painting. That's just me, though. I'm, I'm sort of biased. I get it. I get it. I, of course, I would like it. Of course. Let's come up here, add the old family in, the giant long paint with brand brush. It does make wicked awesome birds, if you ask me. And that's the only person that cares is me, right? No one else. You don't have to please anyone else but yourself with your own painting, right? It's not about, it's not a competition. We're not trying to be better than each other. It's just about, for me anyway, it's about passing on knowledge so you don't struggle in the things that I struggled with when I very first started. And it took me a while to get going, you know what I mean? I was like, well, I, that didn't work. And now I try to tell you guys all those things that didn't work, quote unquote, so it makes your painting journey a little better, a little easier, a little more fun, a little less trial and error, a little more fun with Josh, right? So, very cool. Now, what are we gonna name this sucker? It's a question. What is the question? And uh, yes, that is the half price. If she said it was about 300, that is half off of its normal price. Let's flip you guys around here. Hey, little jump scare action, whoop! Flip you around like that. Now I can read your comments, guys. Amy, Kate, missed the whole painting. What were you doing, watching Harold or something? <laughs> ah, what a dick I am. Oh, that's funny. I'm just, I'm just so funny. I'm so funny, guys. Land before time. Winter in November. I like that, too. Just like a fresh snowfall. Peak of perfection. Sunrise on Frosty Cove. Man, 
the the mod girls are coming heavy with the with the good uh, amethyst sisters. I dig that because of the the trees or because of the mountains. Either way, whatever. One. Peak skies. It's prime time peak skies. The fishing hole. I dig that one. The conservative. See, he was paying attention. He was paying attention in the beginning. It was like, yeah, Josh said he was gonna go down there and fish it up. Paradise. I like that one, Claire. Good job. Reflections of Mountain Ridge. Misty Mountain Hop. What's that? Sapphire Blue Winter. Rose Ridge. I like that one, too. Lavender Haze. Kind of like Purple Haze. I dig it. I dig it. Pastel Peaks. Uh, Winter Honey Hole. See? That's another fishing reference. The Honey Hole. I like that. I like the old Honey Hole. <laughs> Frozen Terrains Ruby Blue Near the Peak is cool Near the Peak <laughs> You guys are laughing at me now My funny sound effects machine Absolutely stunning says Haley High something or other Thank you Snow Day God's Freezer I dig that one Frosty Pines I like that too Cotton Candy Skies Oh Haley High Lady of the Night no one said Twin Peaks yet? Hmm. Well, I mean, there's three, really. Well, there's four. If you think about it, it's like four. Pastel Prosperity. The Epitome of Elevation. Ep the Epitome of Elevation. Ah, you guys are good at this. Let me tell you. Triple Threat. I like that one, too. Quadruplet Peaks. <laughs> you guys are fantastic. Honestly. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Oh, Ooh, oh my goodness. Excuse me. Thank you, Paula. Lilac Frost. I dig that, guys. I dig it. You know what, though? Let's go back to... Only because... It might make his day if I give it to... Where was the thing? It's so far back. Oh, my hell. That's it right there. We got a winner, guys. At least for the uh, the naming of the painting. Conservative Patriot is going to name it The Fishing Hole. I like that. See? Paying attention. Listening throughout the show. And we're naming it The Fishing Hole. So let's take this guy. Flip it around. Now, remember, I sell original canvas paintings. This is not a print. You will not be sent a print. If you purchase this painting, you will be sent this actual canvas. In the mail, free shipping, might I add. By the way, fantastic. Come over here. Zip, zap, zoop. A little Paint With Josh original. And it's number 1005. Holy cow. So we're calling it, what are we calling it again? The Fishing Hole. The fishing with a little apostrophe hole right there right there painted on 11 what 9 of 2023 and where are we all going to go after this guys we're all going to go to paintwithjosh.com because that's where all the action is london has spent a load of time redoing all of paintwithjosh.com it's all brand new so get over there check it out and see what is new over there. You haven't seen it. All right, I'm gonna finish the top of this guy just real quickly. And that way it'll all be done and ready. All right, every easel, no matter what, is gonna block the top of your painting where you can't reach a certain bit. So you gotta take it off, you gotta work with it. Work it in, work it this way, blend it back and forth. Just like that. So, bop, bop, bop. yes, she did great with the website. I agree. I agree. Take this guy, blend him down. Little touches, little bits of purpley blue. So pretty. Oh, so spicy. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can't stand that woman. Like if I was, if I was with that woman, 
I'd be like, look, I, I love you, but I, I can't be here when you're doing that. I gotta leave the house. I gotta. I, I can't be here when you're when you're doing that. I just can't. You drive me insane. Can't do it. Whoop! Stepping on my own tripod. There we go. All right, ladies and gents, that's the show for this evening. Apparently, we didn't get a sale, which is okay. That's fine. Not every painting is going to sell, Josh. Obviously, this one wasn't good enough to pique someone's interest, which, again, is totally fine. It's not going to send me into a deep depression later. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Oh, spicy! I want that girl to get, like, jalapeno juice in her eye and then be like, Oh, spicy! I can see her real reaction when that happens. That would be funny. All right, dudes and dudettes. Oh, corn, extra butter, bitch. I can't, I can't stand her. Can't, just can't do it. Let's see. So how do you have it touching when oil takes so long to dry? Touching what? Touching up here and down here? I don't care if it touches either of those places. It's not going to leave a mark noticeable enough to do it. Now, if you were to swipe across the painting, you would absolutely see a big, uh, a big thing. A big thing. So, who can't I stand? The, the NPC or, yeah, the, what's her, Kelsey Ray NPC or whatever. She, like, just sits there like this in, like, her little pink booby thingy. She looks like Barbie. She's like, oh, thanks for the rose. Oh, spicy. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't deal! <laughs> I can't deal with her. Can't, can't do it. So, this one's uh, just about 300, 294, and you get a free gift with it, right? So, the free gift all gets determined by the spinner winner wheel. Now, the spinner winner wheel will come out after the painting gets purchased, and then we'll spin it, and whatever it lands on, you get. So in this case, you would have won a free canvas print of your choosing, right? Or free spin, you go again, a poster, a hat, maybe a crappy candle, maybe a hoodie, maybe another hat, Bailey's Choice. Oh, and the grand prize, the backpack. That actually cost me the most to send out to you guys. So if you do purchase the painting, or not just this painting, but any painting in the Paint With Josh store, during the live show, then you get a chance at a free gift. So, either a hat or a poster, canvas print, something like that. The Wheel of Spinner Winner Paint with Josh something or other. We got to call it. We're, we're still trying to come up with a name. We're come, trying to come up with a name for the, the Paint with Josh Spinner Winner Wheel is what it is right now. It's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> yes, it's a work in progress. So, uh, do I watch it dry? Yeah, sit there like this. <laughs> Just blowing at it. <laughs> um... It takes in Las Vegas, it, every place is a little bit different, right? So when I was painting in Tennessee and I did my classes out there, it took like three weeks for the paint, uh, the paintings to dry enough to ship to the clients that bought them. In this case, it, when I live in Las Vegas, uh, it takes about four to five days usually. I have an eight day processing time on my store, right? So that gives me eight business days from when you purchase it to when I need to stick it in the mail. Normally they're going out on the third or fourth day because they're already dry. It's just the, the dry, arid air out here in Las Vegas sucks all the moisture out of the paintings. So they dry much faster here than uh, if you were to live anywhere else, like in Tennessee, where I was teaching classes. And they, um, they took a long time, <laughs> very long time to dry. So in any case, they all got to the buyers safely. And uh, it was awesome. So the spinner winner wheel, not spinny winny wheel. That makes me sound like the spinny winny wheel. No, no, no. You have to say spinner winner, right? Winner winner chicken dinner. It's not winny winny chicken dinny. That's not what you do. It's winner, spinner winner wheel, right? Because we spinner and you're the winner on the wheel. I don't know. We're still trying to come up with it. <laughs> it could be. It could be. It's fine. Airy Fairy Faye is just trying to steal all my thunder from my show. It's fine. Spinny Z, now, yeah. Of course, Dan. Yeah, Dan's on her side. I wonder. Winnie Winnie Chicken Dinny. Chicky Dinny with Chicky Nuggets and Chalky Milk. It'd be funny. So, 
Uh, spin with PWJ. That's how you do it. Spin it and win it. Uh, yeah, so I don't want to be up here all night, guys, but this one came out fantastic, man. It's fabulous. Love it. So, the spin with Josh Wheel. That's a good one. That's a good name, too. The Wheel of Fortune. I think we'd get sued. That's chalky milk, not chalk like chalk. Chalk like chocolate. Chalky milk and chicky nuggies, not chalk like white chalk, guys. Come on. Chicky nuggies from, you know, Mandalorian, little baby Yoda. Chalky milk and chicky nuggies. Bro, no. Yeah, bro. 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 The wheelie of Joshy Poo. Winnie. Wheelie, Winnie. Joshy's wheel. I don't know. We're, we're still we're working on it. the Merchy wheel. <laughs> it says the crappy candle. The Merchy Merchy Wurchy wheel. The Wurchy Merchy Witchy Watchy Witchy Wishy Washy meal meal wheel. Who knows? Who knows what it is? The Merchy Wishy Washy Witchy Wurchy wheel. <laughs> no, not the Merchy wheelie. <laughs> we're still we're still coming up. It's it, we're brainstorming the name. <laughs> Let's see. Do you know Easy E? Was it? Let's see. I started watching me on YouTube and Facebook. That's awesome. Thank you for coming over and finding me over on TikTok. This is where we do most of the live creating. And then the paintings that I like the most that we do over here, I'll redo for uh, YouTube and Facebook shows and stuff like that. So, Wheel of Portraits. Close. You could. You could call it. I mean, you could call it that. Good feely wheelie. <laughs> I like all of your guys' suggestions. The good feely wheelie. A couple little more bright bits in here on this guy. He looked a little sad. There we go. He looked a little dark in the center. It's like, it, 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 was your guys' moms like my mom? We, uh, if there was ever like a like an empty portion of the Christmas tree, you had to like fill in more decorations to fill in that spot. You know what I mean? Or was I the only one that had an insane mom when it came to Christmas? She's like, turn the tree just a little, just so we, just so that that spot is in the back. Just turn it just a little bit more. And I'm like, mom, the tree's like 400 pounds. Why are we turning this tree? Anyone else like that? No? Winter Wonderland. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Everywhere you go. Was that an order? Ha! Holy cow! It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> hey, we just got a sale, folks. Cha ching, baby! Woohoo! So, who bought this painting is the question. That's the question. And with this painting, do you guys know that I've now surpassed $100,000 in painting sales this year? This year, 100K in sales. Why am I so broke then? Honestly, like, why don't I have any money? When, uh, when you think about it like that, I mean, it's, you know, it's not, all, it's not all profit in my pocket. It goes to shipping and stuff, buying more merch, freebies, giveaways, stuff like that. But jeez. So yeah, thank you. I gotta, we got to figure out who got this painting. Because it's a historic record-breaking... I set a goal for myself at the beginning of the year. As soon as I started to go viral in March, I actually made 100K from March to now. What? <laughs> what? How oh, wicked. I think that's a repeat, uh, repeat customer. Gotta be repeat. Right? Where's the, the orders here? There we go. Show me. Yeah, of course, repeat. Oh, I know exactly who it is. It's my man. <laughs> Let's see. So, uh, I don't know that, that Tim watches on TikTok, though. Doesn't remember the guy Tim? Tim, our buyer Tim, who always watches with someone else and he watches with a girl. I can't remember what the girl's name is on TikTok, but he watches with her. So, so mod girls, keep an eye out. Is it his sister? Okay. Keep an eye out for the sister's screen name or whoever it is because they bought the painting and, um, He's a, he's a repeat customer many, many, many times. And uh, yeah, so Tim, get your butt over here so we can do the spinny winny wheel. I just called it the spinny winny. What's that spinny winny? 
damn it. <laughs> you guys got to me. I, I wanted to call it Spinner Winner, but that was legit. It came out Spinny Winnie. Like, I didn't, I wasn't planned or anything. And tell me that's not orange, by the way. If that's yellow, somebody messed up, right? Because they're supposed to be matching. That doesn't match. So basically, this is a free hat when I call the, uh, when I call the company and be like, um, so you messed up on my order. Yeah, the spinny winny wheel. It just sounds so ridiculous. Spinny winny. <laughs> oh, man. Throw some stars in there. It's daytime. Stars. Yeah, stars. Hello, London. <laughs> um, so I have a question. Yeah. Do I get alimony now? Just wondering. Oh, because of all my sales? Yeah, yeah. No. I didn't. I mean, I have. <laughs> that's why you don't want to come over tomorrow and do your taxes, huh? Even with all those sales, I still have <laughs> no funds. It's like I can pay yeah. all my bills. You know, I mean, I'm living off my art, but I don't have you know savings. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you a conservatorship for next year. <laughs> You'd be like Britney Spears. <laughs> be like this is this painting sold you get twenty three dollars <laughs> the rest goes into a savings account <laughs> no, I can't do that. Can't survive um okay i'll file a court order tomorrow then um anyway <laughs> no i'm i'm joking anyone who's been here now josh is in trouble anyone who's been here multiple times knows that we do not live like that um I can't believe it. I never thought I would ever sell 50. I never thought I'd sell $20,000 in art in a year. Never. It, it, it's funny because that's, I was going to talk to you about that tomorrow, funnily enough. Oh, yeah. Just on your, um, I, I knew you were, I knew that you were there probably before you did because of accounting. But, um, okay. yeah. So we'll have to, uh, we'll have to talk about how much you, you need to spend before the end of the year. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, I, accounting is fun. Accounting is fun. Hashtag accounting is fun. I don't have it just for spend. It will, you, with, yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, and everything else. Uh, well, you will just have to make sure you have no money by the end of the year. That's it. Call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Call that's. It. That's not how it works. You don't just you don't just say that you've got no money. We're gonna make sure you've got no money. I, um, you make. Uh, down I will I will take all remaining monies that you have. Um, but yeah, accounting is super fun. I love accounting. Um, I do just want to let everybody know that was supposed to be at my show at five p.m. today. That I am laying horizontal uh, with a tens unit on my back and well medicated for anyone wondering i am struggling massively um but i will be back on sunday for sure spin that wheel get this person a crappy candle so that they can uh well, i want them to want them to be here when uh when we spin the wheel so or just steal their address and just send them something free that's what i'm gonna do yeah, they can have a peach candle. No, I'm joking. 50% off all peach candles in my store, by the way. It's automatic, so you don't need a code or anything. Um, I love that. Good. Oh, the peaches. Get over there with all your with all your dough laws. I, I, I'm telling you, just because I had that much in sale mm -hmm. doesn't mean I have um, any money. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Look. Look. It's like, it's, it's like every single ex marriage situation in open court look well, at all the money i made but i don't have any of it i think i got 56 dollars <laughs> in the bank so, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah you can have half my 56 bucks that's in the bank right now yeah, hey yeah. that's you know <laughs> that would get me at least one doordash starbucks like anything i can do <laughs> That's the funny thing, though. Like most of it's gone to shipping labels and buying more canvases. That's and... that's literally uh, that's literally the problem. We got to get you a we got to get you a sponsorship with Michael, so they just feed you canvases. Like, yeah, yeah. Life is expensive. Geneva yeah. says, "I feel the same. Life is expensive. It really is. It is. It really is." You shook that and it gave me like homeless person change cups. <laughs> it's 
So, mm. Starbucks for the win. All right. Well, um, I guess let's do the we'll we'll do the Skinner giveaway and then um, whatever it lands on, we'll give to Tim and I'll just ship it to him. And um, I don't know if that he's going to be here watching or conservative painting. We we picked your name as the title of the painting, so congrats on that. And then. Uh, then it got purchased by a guy named Tim, and now we're waiting on Tim to spin the winner wheel, but I want to make sure he's here watching before we spin it. But we did choose your name uh, that you put forth, which was... The Fishing Hole. Yeah, the Fishing Hole. I've been watching the whole time, laying here, going, why is this TENS unit just an amazing piece of inven in in invention? That made no sense. Oh, spicy! <laughs> oh, TENS unit. Oh, tens unit spicy. That's uh, that's what I'm dealing with. Yeah, I think spinny winny wheel is great. The muchy wheelie. No, no, spinner winner wheel. Spinny winny wheel. I'm sorry. I think it's cute. We should make it small. You should get a really tiny one. <laughs> the spinny winny itty bitty wheel. <laughs> he hates. It. It'd be like a. Yeah, he hates it, guys. It'd be like a like a like a fidget spinner. Yeah, the eedy beedy spinny weeny wheel. All right, let's do the. I'm sorry. Spin the wheel. For, the wheel. Uh, for Tim, I don't think he's watching, but we'll do we do it for every buyer. He bought the painting, so everyone's gonna get to C and A. If it lands on try again, I win. I don't have to give him anything. Okay, he's not even here watching. If it lands on the crappy candle, he gets a discount code to any candle. Poster right there. So it's a free he poster. He got a poster. Spinny winny. Oh, he oh just my goodness. I was like, are you, are you watching? We're about to spin the wheel. He goes, no, I'm not. <laughs> he, t t Tiffany I'm just put. Teeny tiny spinny weeny wheel. That's it. That it's is it. It's the teeny weeny little spinny wheelie wheelie. Did you just say wheelie wheel? Yeah, you said wheelie wheel. Wheelie wheelie. Wheel. The spinny wheelie wheel. The spinny wheelie. <laughs> Join Josh's live for tongue twisters. Yeah. Tongue twisters and laughter. Yeah. That is the worst. That is like the worst Bob Barker audience laughter I've ever heard in my life. I like the fart one. Oh yeah, you can tell. I mean, no one's. That was if the you, machine. If you farted like that during the show, you'd have to end it. It was, yeah, raise you off the ground. Me off. And Josh is a hundred percent right, guys. If you are if you are unaware of all the goodies that Josh sells, please head over to paintwithjosh.com. Um, Irish wrist watch. I can say it no problem. I, some people have uh, Irish watch. Irish wrist watch. All right, so uh, Tim got a poster. I gotta write that down. Timmy Tim Tim got a poster. Okay, so right on, guys. Well, let's get up on out of here. And uh, I can't believe it. It's been an awesome day. It's been an excellent painting. Turned out fantastic. Irish, Irish wristwatch. Excuse me. Um, hear thee, hear thee. Hear thee, hear thee, Irish wristwatch. Yeah. I'm third night of paint with Josh. <laughs> third night of wristwatches. All right. Let's see. Yeah, he buys watch. He buys the painting when he's not even watching the show. He's awesome. It's fantastic. Fact. So, um, all right. Well, we'll get out of here. Uh, thank you, London. You tell everybody where they can find you. And I'm gonna make sure I clean everything up. Yeah, you, you, you clean. I'll speak. Um, so, as briefly mentioned, you can find everything that Josh sells, including his merchandise and cool things like I watch, uh, I watch Josh on TikTok, etc., etc. Super cool stuff, plus super comfy leggings, hoodies, all the things that you could possibly want, covered in the infamous splatter print and uh, 
Josh style item that you're seeing him wear right now. Uh, you can get hats, uh, hoodies, puzzles even. His puzzles are really cool if you are running out of wall space or you just love puzzles in general. Uh, there is the hoodie your girlfriend watches, uh, follows me on TikTok. I have two hoodies. Nobody will ever get their grubby little mitts on. And uh, and I'm okay with that. One is uh, you watch my ex-husband on TikTok. Uh, no one else will, will get that. It's see how much merch he has. Now, he could just run the merch shop out of his house. He doesn't. He does have a third party send them all to you. So anything that you see on there size-wise is the limitations of what the third party merchandise printer can do. Uh, what on earth was that stance? In the Heisman, like right go, go, Power Rangers. Um, <laughs> Purple Ranger. Um, so, <laughs> if you are interested in a new wardrobe before Josh punches the tripod and we all fall over, please make sure that you guys head over to paintwithjosh.com. Even though he's raving about living off his art, it does give us uh, greater. Uh, great pleasure when we see that people have visited the site because it does take a lot of energy to maintain a website and we are not corporate America. We do not pay somebody to do it. Uh, I do it. <laughs> so, don't pay you to do it. No, fact. You're going to start though, given, you know, you're telling all your followers how much you're making. That's, I'm going to put in a request now. I'm always transparent with the fans. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please head over there and check out all that that site has to offer, including links and the followings on social media. And a uh, it is linked. It should be linked in his link tree in his bio, plus all his affiliate links as well. He does have an Amazon storefront where you can buy all the goodies as well that he recommends. And he has an Amazon wish list if you feel like sending him some stuff. Uh, he is here five nights a week at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh and uh, yeah, I go live two night, uh, three nights a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, to pour candles if you are interested. My website's super simple. It's just thecrappycandles.com. Uh, November 15th, I drop all my Christmas scents if you're a fan of Christmas scents. So uh, please make sure that uh, you support small businesses because it means so much more to small businesses than it does to corporate America. Walmart doesn't care if you buy stuff from us. It literally changes our lives as small businesses when you purchase something from us. So that is all I have. Have a wonderful day. You must give warning before you turn the strobe lights on. Have a wonderful night. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, whether you support paint with josh or you support the crappy candle we're still going to buy the same 11 year old tennis shoes that's all she ever wants dad i need a pair of shoes can i get these jordans dad i want these jordans oh look at these air force ones she got these panda dunks look it's a panda dunk what is a panda dunk apparently they're 500 dollars. that's what they are so whether or not you support me or you support the the crappy candles we're both supporting the same child even though we don't live together anymore we're still best friends and we still co-parent and Everything goes towards that dang kid in the next room. So, um, yeah, take all my money and I, I'll take all your money and I'll give it right to the damn kid because that's what happens anyway. Whether it's food or <laughs> food or phone bills or freaking sheen. What is sheen, by the way? Sheen. Sheen? Never spent so much on a, on a, on a sheeny word like sheen. So, yeah, whether or not you support, uh, support me or support, yeah, or the dentist, $400 today. <clears throat> $400. Uh, and that's not even just one. That's like multiple $400. <clears throat> oh, God. Oh, God. God, being a parent sucks, bro. It sucks. Do not have kids. No. It's expensive enough trying to take care of myself. Let alone taking care of someone else. Ah, oh, don't do it. Wrap it up, boys. Wrap it up, girls. Take your depot shots, whatever the you know, whatever the thing is, diaphragms, whatever we got to do. Okay, no more kids, please. I'm still not ready. I'm still not. 
uh, uh, respond. Well, I'm responsible enough, but I'm still not mature. Well, I guess I am, but no, but I'm also immature and like, I'm still very selfish. You know what I mean? Still, still like, what do you mean? I got to take you. I got shit to do myself. I got to take you somewhere now. I love her to death though. She's the apple of my eye. My life would be totally different without her. So both of these girls, uh, the crappy candles and our daughter. No, Josh, with the parent advice. What? I don't understand. I don't understand. Is that go? Go. I I I, I mailed your painting out today. The number one thousand went out. Oh, wrapped around. Here. Oh my lord. Oh yeah. All right. Whoa. Ho ho. Uh. <laughs> Thought you were talking about something else. And then, uh, yeah, wrap it up. Like, you know, I'm like, why around the thing? That's not going to, nothing happens from this guy. But yeah, no, I am definitely, yeah, she has me wrapped around her finger. Yeah, yeah this is the this is the problem with reading stuff and not hearing it, right? Uh, yeah, that was uh, like, why are you wrapping it up? You just get in there like this. That's all you got to do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No, I do. I mean, I do. I know. Oh, I know. All right, um, <laughs> before we get ourselves in trouble, um, we're going to get out of here. I love you guys. Uh, I can't wait to, um, to, <laughs> and that's a wrap. All right. <laughs> uh, no, I can't wait to come back tomorrow. We're going to do it again. We've got Friday night freestyle. And then uh, maybe Monday, oh shit, tomorrow I've got to go work the gallery actually. So if you follow me on Facebook, be prepared for a gallery post. I have to take one of the paintings from here and take it down there. Um, and then I got to work there for like three hours. So if you're in Vegas, come down to Meadows Mall tomorrow between 11 and two, your boy will be right there, standing at the door, greeting guests ah, shit, as they come in. Kidding me. Now, where did I touch it is the thing, right? Oh, I can see it. Damn it. <laughs> That's what you get, Josh. Flipping, messing around. Always messing around. Oh, right. So, before we get any more paint on us, let's get out of here, guys. We'll say goodbye. We love you. And until I clean off my elbow next time, straight in the center of my elbow, too. <laughs> Boop. Just like that. I love winter scenes, too. I absolutely do, Mr. Kohler. <clears throat> absolutely love winter scenes. Love painting them. I love being in them. I love driving through them. I love looking at them on TV. Love them. So thanks for the corn. Can't stand. Hi, I'm Kelsey Ray, artist. Get out of here. Oh, that was probably a great screenshot. Didn't even think about that. Okay. Let's get out before these guys send me. Oh, spicy. Oh, look at spicy, man. Oh, with the peppers. Oh. All right. Let's go hang out in Discord or something. Make sure I got no more paint on me anywhere. I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, Let's go pop over to the cord, guys. Okay, I got to message Tim back. I got to write to Printful and be like, hey, you sent me a yellow hat with an orange thing, right? Those are not the same color. Is that just me? <laughs> Is that just me thinking that? I do like it, though. I did get an orange and black one. That's why I think that where they made a mistake. I wonder if the, the orange one has a yellow front on it. Then I'll get two free hats. Ha <laughs> ha! That'll be fantastic. So... I don't know what you guys are talking about, but it's definitely facts. Whatever it is, it's facts. It's facts, bro. Okay, I love you guys. I'm going to get out of here. Until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And always follow all my mods in London and everybody else. <laughs>